Okay, good morning Year 8. Uh, today we are working in uh, Replit again um, and you should be looking at Year 8, 4th of May 2020 tasks. So there's the classroom there. I'm just going to go inside that. And we've got four tasks to do today, all based around for loop. Um, there will be a little bit of uh, if statement in, the, in one of them. Uh, so I'm going to start straight away on task one. You can see all the other tasks are locked at the moment. So task one, and what's ask us to do? Here we will make a program that will print out a sequence of numbers based on a start and stop value supplied by the user. The program should ask for two integers from the user. The first statement's already been completed, so I can see that there. Then the program should use these values in a for loop to print out the sequence. It gives us an example. If the user entered five and then eight, it would print out five, six, seven, eight. Then there's a warning there that stop values in a for loop are not reached. So we'll talk about that in a second. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter um, a stop value. So a suitable variable name for this is stop. And we're going to cast it to be an integer straight away. Then we're going to use the input statement. Remember, an input statement makes a data type, which is a string. Um, and we can't use strings for our for loop uh, start and stop values. So we change it into an integer using int. And that is casting it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a for loop, which will print out the output in the way that we wanted. So I'll use a for loop and I'll just use a for i in range. And then inside brackets, we put the start value, which a lot of time people would do things like this. There's a 0, 5. Um, that's the start and the stop. But we're using variables. So start and stop. Then the colon, press enter. When you press enter, you should see that the uh, cursor has indented a few spaces. If it didn't do that, maybe you forgot to put the colon in. And now I'm simply going to do print, and I'm going to print the looping variable there, like that, i. Okay? Um, the next thing I would do is I would test that myself. So I'll run, and I'm just going to type in 5 and 8. And, ah, it's gone 5, 6, 7. But I wanted 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's because it doesn't get to stop. It goes 5. For i in range 5 to 8, it would go 5, print out 5, 6, print out 6, 7, print out 7. But it wouldn't get to 8. So if I really do want to print that out, I should add 1 here. I could have added 1 somewhere else, but for me, I'm going to add 1 there. I'm going to run that again. Test it. And then here. It's, uh, it's done exactly what I expected, five, six, seven, eight. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the tests. Um, and there's an error there. So I'm just gonna close that and I'm gonna run the tests again. And that shows you that Replit sometimes, it gets something wrong somehow, and I don't know why. I don't run Replit, it's a massive website, a really good website, but it just makes a little mistake now and again. It's passed all those tests, uh, and that's fine. Okay, and now I'm gonna submit that. Um, so I'm just going to submit that, I'm just checking over for a second, yeah, and it runs tests again, submit, and I've completed that assignment, and then I can go back to the classroom, when I go back to the classroom, I'm just going to refresh the screen, so it unlocks, it unlocks uh, task 2, and it says count and steps, so I'll do task 2 now, task 2, that's, uh, it's got task 1 in there already, um, it's basically what we're doing is we're just going to add some stuff to task one. Using the solution for task one, we're now going to add code so we can use the step feature in a for loop. Uh, we need to ask the user for a step value, then add the step value into the for loop. Um, uh, interesting point, the step value is optional. Well, it has to be because we didn't have a step value in the last task. Um, this means that a for loop doesn't have to have it. If you don't have a step value, the default value of one is used. Okay, so add code to get a step value. Okay, so I'm going to add code to get a step value. I'm going to call it step int input. So, and here 
this is my uh, example solution which you, when you finish any task you should be able to see my example solution and you should look at that because you can see this one it's got a couple of extra notes in it okay and it says here change the for loop so that it uses steps so that it steps and here the only thing I have to do is go steps or step there we should say step or steps um, and that's done that and that's it so this bit here and that bit there um, and now I can run it and if I run it with 0, 10 in steps of 2 I would expect 0, 2, 3, sorry, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 and that's exactly what I've got so I feel pretty happy that that's worked so I'm going to run that um, there seems to be a problem there Try and stop that. Run the test again. There's something wrong. Okay, so I'm just going to try and quick stop. If that happens, then there's some sort of problem. I don't think I've got any problem with my code. In fact, I'm sure I don't have any problem with my code. So um, I might just refresh this page. If you have problems, you have to do stuff like this. Okay. So I've re refreshed the page. I haven't changed the code. Step equals in input. And I've got two brackets at the end there, so that's fine. Uh, I did step there. I, I, I think this is good. I'm going to run the tests. And you can see there it's passed them all. This is this is Reckler, and, and sometimes you come up with problems like this. You know, it, it's a free website. It's great. So we just got to realize that now and again that little glitchiness happens. That's okay, so I'll click close there. So there we go, we've got a for loop that does start, stop and step. We understand that step by default is one. Um, if you do want to print out the stop value, you have to go one past it if you like. Okay, so now I'm going to submit that and it passes all those tests. I'll go back to the classroom. Um, so I've done those two tasks here. Uh, task three next. Uh, task 3 is called adding numbers. For loops are really good for stuff like this. Um, and here what we're going to do is quite simply we're going to make a for loop that adds five, five numbers together and then we'll print out the total of those numbers. Um, and it gives you a, a step by step thing here. Uh, if you're going to add some numbers together we need to have a, an initial total which is zero because we haven't added any numbers, numbers yet. Um, after that we make a for loop that will operate five times. Inside the for loop, we get a value from the user, so we only have one input statement, and we add it to the total. Um, then we print the total out. When we print the total out, there's a note there saying, don't put the print statement inside the for loop. We've got to do a, a delete and get it to the left-hand side, as we'll see. So initialize some sort of variable, um, which will hold the total value. And I'm going to use total. Um, if you, if you use sum, sum can sometimes be a keyword, uh, and that might be a bad thing to do. So total equals zero. Next thing, I'm going to have a for loop that executes five times. So for, and I'm going to use j, so people don't think that i is some special word. For j in range, um, and if I want something to happen five times, I go zero, start at zero, finish at five, colon. Let's look at that. 0, 5, so that would mean it will operate on the 0th time, the first time, the second time, the third time, and the fourth time. It will operate five times. Okay, so if you want a loop to operate five times, 0, 5. If you want it to operate 10 times, 0, 10. Okay, so now inside the for loop, get an integer from the user. A sensible variable name could be value. You might have something else. Don't call it integer. Don't call it integer, and definitely don't call it int. Okay, and there I've got my value from the user using value equals int input. Remember, we're going to add it together. It has to be an integer, so we had to cast it as well. And now we're going to add that to total. And here we could do total equals total plus value. Okay, but the shorthand way of doing that in Python is total plus equals value. That just means total equals total plus value. Not a problem. Okay, 
So total plus equals value. And if you don't remember these, you should be taking print statements and adding it to a Word document. Uh, print out the total. So this bit should be nice and easy. Print total. Yeah, there we go. Um, and now I'm just going to run that. So I'm going to run it. And now uh, I'll add five numbers. One, 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 one. And it's printed out five. I'm going to run that again for a couple of different, uh, well, for some different numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Just before I press enter, don't put daft numbers in. Put numbers where you can add them together and, and know what the answer is by yourself. So uh, one to five added together is 15. So it's 15. Then I'm going to run the tests. And that passed. And then I'm going to submit that. So that's task three done. Really, really good way of uh, of do, doing that one. It's uh, I'm just having it. Oh, yeah. Here you can see the model solution. So I'm going to click on that. The model solution there. Um, this is written by the teacher. If you want to go back to your submission, back to submission. So if you think, oh, I made a mistake, then you can you can look at this. Um, and this looks exactly just as I've typed a second ago. Um, some students, if I say add five numbers together, they will put five input statements, and that's really bad because if you do that, then I'll, I'll ask you, okay, add 20 numbers together, and are you going to put 20 input statements? Then I'll ask you to do a million, yeah, and then it just gets silly. So we need to use for loops. If someone says add 100 numbers together, you can do that, yeah, uh, and, and so on. So uh, we need to realize that the benefit of for loops here for iteration and this is called iteration okay so I'm going to go back to my submission and I'm going to go back to the classroom and here task 4 hasn't unlocked so I'll just refresh the screen and I'm going to go to this one which it says add number and here um, it says uh, we're going to use the solution to task 3 we need to add a feature which will not add any values if that are negative. So if somebody put in a negative value, maybe these are exam scores, um, so a negative value is invalid. You need to alter the contents of the, pro, uh, of the if statement so that, um, sorry, it, it should say you need to alter the contents of the for loop so that if a value is entered, the program enters invalid value. Uh, if a value entered is negative, sorry, the program enters invalid value, otherwise it's added to the total as before. And here, um, so let's have a look at that. Um, inside here, I've got the for loop. I've got I'm getting the number from somebody. And here, um, I'm going to add an if statement uh, that will test the user's um, value. So if the value is less than zero, is, is, is what we're looking at here. If it's less than zero, if it's a negative number, it's not acceptable. So we use less than zero, and then the colon. And then here, um, I, I don't like putting comments in beforehand, but I'm doing that to help you out um, because it's, it's already indented. And I'm going to do print. And I need to write down exactly what it says in the uh, instructions. And it says in there, invalid value. If you type anything else, it, it won't work. Okay. Um, and then this otherwise here. Um, that actually needs to be backspace deleted, so when you see it on your screen, it will be. Uh, else, else, we can add it. Total plus equals value. Um, so, there you go. If the value is less than zero, if it's a negative number, we print something out to the user. Uh, otherwise, we just add it as we did before, so nice and easy. I'm going to run that. And here, if I add, I'm just going to make the uh, output screen a bit bigger. If I have 1, 1, 1, negative 1, and 1, ah, there we go. Straight away it's printed out in valid value, and it should have 4 there. Sorry. So, I'll do that once more. If I have negative 4 in valid value, negative 4 in valid value, negative 9 in valid value, negative 5, Invalid value, negative 4, the output should be 0, okay, with those 5 print statements. Now I'm going to run the test, and that's that's successful, um, and then I'm going to submit that work, and that's
that's fine. Okay, so uh, I can, once again I can see the model solution if, if I need to. Um, and the model solution is here, exactly as we tied before. So have a go at those. Um, it'd be nice if you had a go at them, go at them before this. If you if you're stuck, then you uh, you look at this and you replicate my code. Even if you when you look back at it, you think, "Oh, I didn't do it like that." Then have a look at it again. If one of your friends in the class don't appear to be doing it, make sure they know about the video. Um, and send them the link. The link I have sent the link, but if you're messaging them, then just say, "Oh, Sir's made a video." Okay, and I'll speak to you sometime later. Bye bye.